the airplane. It is a compromise of solutions to a variety of technical problems. For example, lift is as important to an aircraft as our speed, maneuverability, payload, and range. Some characteristics directly present a trade-off between each other, so aircraft designers are always having to sacrifice one for the other. Recently, a team of scientists and engineers from NASA's Langley Center and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology created a new type of aircraft wing. In addition, experts from Cornell University, the University of California, Berkeley, the University of California, Santa Cruz, Qantas Technical University, and technical specialists from the Moffett Field Federal Airfield in California have also participated in work on the new airfoil. The list of participants indicates the significance of the project. With the introduction of this new type of wing, it will be possible to avoid many of the trade-offs mentioned that come with creating an aircraft. To better understand the magnitude of the discovery, we would like to compare traditional wing design with a new solution. After all, one of the main challenges when designing an aircraft is choosing the optimal wing shape and its characteristics in terms of its geometry, strength, as well as how aerodynamic it is. The wing of a modern aircraft is a complex system with a large number of moving elements, cables, pipelines, electric and hydraulic drives. Add to that fuel tanks, which are often located inside the wing. If we remove the skin from the wing, then we see a spatial structure consisting of spars, in other words, longitudinal beams, and transverse strengthening elements, which are commonly known as ribs. The combination of spars and ribs gives the wing its necessary rigidity with a relatively small mass. At the same time, there is a lot of free space among the longitudinal and transverse elements of the frame, which is used for fuel tanks, hydraulic system communications, fuel lines, and electrical wiring. If the spars set the length of the wing, then the transverse ribs gives it its aerodynamic shape. This is most obvious when seen in cross-section. When the aircraft accelerates, the airflow creates a net pressure on the lower part of the wing and creates lift. From this, we can conclude that the lift depends on the wing area, its profile, as well as on the angle of attack, speed, and airflow density. However, if the wing area is too large, then along with the phenomenal lift, the aircraft will experience a larger drag force. This means that more fuel will be required to accelerate and maintain a high flight speed. This is the first trade-off, which is normally solved by the moving parts of the traditional wing, the flaps. There are many types of flap design, but they all perform a similar function. When extended, the flaps increase the area of the wing, as occurs during takeoff and descent, whilst during the descent and landing stages, the flaps perform a braking function. In level flight, the flaps are hidden away. In addition to the flaps, ailerons are located at the rear of the wings of the aircraft. These are also movable panels, but located closer to the far edge of the wing. Their function is to control the roll of the aircraft by controlling lift on each side. Some aircraft have flaps and ailerons combined into a single mechanism. When the panel is lowered down, it functions as a flap, and when raised up, it functions as an aileron. Control surfaces that combine ailerons and flaps are called flapperons. Sometimes the lift force needs to be reduced rather than increased. For this, spoilers are used, which are placed on the upper surface of the wing. When they are raised, part of the wing ceases to perform a lifting function. This is necessary when controlling the rapid descent of the aircraft in the retracted state, the spoilers do not affect the operation of the wing. The slats provide the optimum aerodynamic characteristics of the wing during flight. They are located on the edge at the front of the wing and are responsible for the angle of attack. The wing tips also play a role in fuel economy. These are the ends bent upward. They are called winglets. Winglets reduce swirl formation and improve handling at low speeds. The presence of all these components allows, with certain limit, to change the aerodynamic properties of the wing and choose the configuration that is most suitable for the current flight mode. The downside of traditional wing design is their control proximity and the heavy weights involved. There are also security issues. 
If any control fails or jams, then the risk of losing an aircraft is extremely high. Researchers from NASA and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have created and tested a completely new design. Their flexible wing is able to change its shape whilst in flight. It has no need for flaps nor ailerons. This new wing is constructed in a truly original way. Instead of longitudinal spars and rigid transverse elements, the wing frame consists of thousands of small sections which are interconnected. Each section individually is a rather fragile structure. In fact, these are sections or cells of a hexagonal shape with thin edges. The cells are interconnected either by means of a hinge or a bolted connection. The material is a polymer that has the lightness of an air gel and the flexibility of rubber. However, if a large three-dimensional structure is assembled from such sections, then a powerful truss is obtained that can withstand significant loads. The cells are assembled into a frame, a controlled dynamic spatial structure. The mass of the frame is extremely low because most of it is empty space. The prefabricated wing frame is light and flexible, but at the same time extremely strong and resistant to breakage. No less revolutionary is the wing skin. Small elements made of polymer material are also used here. A deformable, seamless surface creates a scale armor that does not break when bent, is not torn off by airflow, and does not collapse under aerodynamic loads. In the air, the wing takes on whichever shape is optimal for a particular phase of flight. An aircraft with this type of wing has no need for ailerons or flaps. Roll and pitch control occurs by changing the profile of the entire wing or a separate part of it. This engineering solution has been inspired by the natural world. The wings of birds are also made with a thin frame with a light weight, but dense and abundant plumage. The bird wing has no ailerons or flaps, but by changing of the angle of inclination or sweep, the bird is able to control its flight. The flexibility of the bird's wing allows it to soar smoothly, maneuver sharply, plummet like a stone down towards prey, and when necessary, quickly regain height. It must be said that even for traditional wing designs, engineers try to introduce mechanisms and systems for changing the sweep and angle of attack. But each new control point carries additional risks associated with the possible failure of these mechanisms. Moreover, the introduction of additional control units is reflected in the final cost of the aircraft. These economic factors also play an important role. The new type of wing is not only easier to assemble, but also cheaper in terms of material costs. The flexible wing is simpler and less expensive to maintain, so all major aircraft manufacturers have been paying close attention to this new development from the scientists and engineers from NASA and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. A prototype aircraft featuring the new wing was tested in a wind tunnel at the NASA Langley Research Center. We note that the model was built according to the flying wing design. The advantage of such a design is that the entire surface of the aircraft is used to create lift. With a classic layout, only the wings are responsible for this. The absence of a traditional fuselage reduces the weight of the airframe. The large surface increases the lifting force and hence the carrying capacity. The flying wing design has separate advantages for military aviation. The effective scattering area is lower, meaning the aircraft's radar stealth is increased. The father of this design philosophy is considered to be the American aeronautical engineer and industrialist Jack Northrup, who believed the flying wing scheme to be the next stage in the evolution of aviation. Northrup built several prototypes, but did not live to witness his brainchild and the magnum opus of his life's work, the B-2 Spirit Bomber, take to the air. Check out the video on our channel covering this exceptional and incredibly expensive aircraft. They are not without their drawbacks. Due to poor mass distribution, flying wing aircraft tend to yaw. Instability during flight is compensated by the control electronics. This in turn increases the cost of such aircraft. However, the new flexible wing technology should remove the handling problem. After all, a flexible wing changes its shape on the fly. NASA and MIT engineers have developed a special algorithm in which the wing takes the shape that corresponds to the current phase of flight. The wingspan of the prototype is about 16 feet. 
aircraft and drones of a similar size are operated across the world. However, 16 feet is less than the wingspan of most major aircraft. The creators claim that the prototype can be scaled up without affecting the ability of the larger aircraft to fly. The future of military aviation is now tied up with drones. This means that the adaptive flexible wing is of great interest to the Air Force. Note that a side effect of the flexibility of the wing is the reduced noise of the aircraft and its high fuel efficiency. Therefore, we will follow the development of this technology with particular interest. The approach taken by the engineers from NASA and the leading universities involved in the project at some point became known as bionics. It also has the names biomimetics and biomimicry. The essence lies in borrowing certain properties and concepts from nature. Millions of years of evolution replace many years of studies and laboratory experiments for researchers. Bionic design is a way of engineering various objects that use solutions that are different from traditional man-made approaches to reduce weight and increase strength. For example, all metal parts have been replaced by units with a cellular, lattice, or porous structure. The structures gain the necessary strength, but their weight is much lower. And the casting of these parts is being replaced by a printing process using industrial 3D printers. At the dawn of development, bionic design became widespread in areas where high loads were not expected. However, at long last, aviation's turn has now come. Subscribe to the channel to avoid missing a single update.